infrared spectroscopy makes use of the fact that when we talk about the molecular vibrations of a molecule, uh, makes use of the fact that different bonds absorb different amounts of energy. They absorb different energies. So that is the key to infrared spectroscopy. So we know that molecules can be excited so that they're vibrating and stuff in lots of different ways and they do that by absorbing energy from infrared light. So now if these different bonds absorb different energies it means they absorb different wavelengths of infrared light. So different wavelengths and we denote wavelength by lambda. So different wavelengths. Now the energy that absor that's absorbed by a bond depends on a range of things. And so these things uh, contribute to how we can analyze uh, the, the, uh, and identify a substance using infrared spectroscopy. So the energy absorbed by a bond depends on the atoms involved in the bond. And so this can this can sort of manifest itself in, two, in, in a variety of ways. So this could be through strength the strength of the bond so a strong bond means that means that uh, a stronger bond will absorb high energy and if uh, if the atoms involved in the bond are heavy if we're dealing with heavy atoms then this means that the it will, that this bond will absorb low energy now, so the atoms involved in a bond uh, dictate the energy that the bond can absorb. However, at the same time, the surrounding structure also affects how a bond absorbs energy. So, if we have two different molecules, and say we have two different molecules that both contain a CH bond. Now, let's say this, this, CH, this CH bond is uh, surrounded by a structure 1. And let's say we've got another molecule, a different molecule, containing a CH bond. And that uh, the structure surrounding this CH bond is structure 2. Now, these CH bonds will absorb very similar amounts of energy because they have the same at because they the bond uh, is made up from the same atoms. Both they both both these carbon hydrogen bonds uh, are just that. They're both carbon hydrogen bonds, and so they will absorb similar amounts of energy. However, because they have different surrounding structures, the exact amount of energy, the exact wavelength of infrared light that they will absorb will be slightly different because their, their situation within the wider context of the molecule that they're in is a little bit different. So they're going to take different amounts of energy to get them excited. Now, we can analyze the way in which, uh, if, if we have an unknown compound, then we can use this, this absorption of infrared light to identify it, to help us identify it using infrared spectroscopy. So, because each different uh, bond or each different functional group, if we're dealing with organic molecules, because different functional groups or different bonds absorb different energies and thus they absorb different wavelengths of light, we can analyze the wavelengths of light that an unknown compound absorbs and thus figure out a little bit about its structure. And so we use this using spectroscopy. So this is this gives us a this this is a diagram of a, of a basic sort of infrared spectroscopy setup. What we have here is we have a red a an infrared light source. And we're passing it through two cells, both a sample cell and a reference cell. So the sample cell contains our unknown compound dissolved in solvent, and the reference cell contains only the solvent. And so what we're doing is we're measuring the transmittance of different wavelengths of light. So transmittance refers to the amount of light that passes through. So if some infrared light is going to be absorbed by our sample, then uh, that wavelength of light will have a low transmittance because if it's absorbed by the sample, not much of that wavelength of light will make it through all the way to the detector. And so what we do, the reason we have this reference cell is that we, we use it in conjunction with the, uh, this device here, which is called a beam chopper. Basically, what the beam chopper does is it alternates the light that is reaching the detector. So this beam chopper keeps spinning so that uh, one, one instant we've got light from the reference cell reaching the detector, and the next instant we've got light from the sample cell reaching the detector. And so 
That means that we can we can look at the difference in uh, transmittance of different wavelengths of light between the sample cell and the reference cell, and that means we're only analysing the light absorbed by the stuff that we've dissolved in the solvent. Uh, without the reference cell, then we would uh, we would be analysing the the wavelengths of light absorbed by the solvent as well. But this means by by comparison, we can eliminate any any the effect of, on the absorption of different wavelengths of the solvent, and thus we can get a more accurate uh, determination of the identity the identity of the compound that we're looking for. So we've got this beam chopper in the reference cell, and we also have a monochromator. So we can move this monochromator around such that uh, only certain wavelengths of light are being measured at the detector. So then we can measure the transmittance of all the different wavelengths. So as we do this, if we run this uh, process, if we've got our unknown sample dissolved in our solvent up here, and we move our monochromator through all the different wavelengths, then what we get is a reading or a, a sort of a chart that looks a little bit like this. What we get is we get sort of a graph of transmittance versus something called wave number. Now wave number is a bit of a silly, unnecessary, complicated thing that some chemist somewhere thought was a good idea. Wave number is basically another way of looking at frequency or wavelength of light. So the wave number of a certain, uh, a certain piece of light is equal to 1 over the wavelength. So if we've got a wavelength of 400 nanometers, then we can work out the wave number of, uh, of that piece of light simply by saying the wave number, do that by Wn, is equal to 1 over 400 nanometers. So that's how we work out the wave number. So we get this graph of transmittance versus wave number. Now the majority of frequencies of infrared light are going to pass through uh, the sample cell unperturbed. So we're going to get you know, usually the transmittance is going to be pretty high. But then every now and then we're going to reach a wavelength of infrared light that will be absorbed by our unknown compound. And so then we're going to get a dip in transmittance. And so we can use this graph to help us identify and sort of map out the structure of our unknown compound. As I said earlier, if CH bonds May, uh, may absorb slightly different energies in different molecules, but usually a CH bomb will absorb roughly the same amount of energy. And so if we look at this chart and we know, uh, we know the, the range of wavelengths of uh, infrared light that will be absorbed by a CH bond, then we can see if there is in fact a CH bond in our unknown compound. So let's say if we get a, a trough in our transmittance wave number graph here, and uh, th we know that this wave number here, wave number here is characteristically uh, absorbed by, by a CH bond, and we know that this trough has been caused by the presence of a CH bond. And so by using our, our, our transmittance wave number graph in conjunction with our known data for different wave numbers and, and different wavelengths that are usually absorbed by, by different bonds, then we can uh, analyze and map out the structure and the different bonds that are present in a compound, helping us to identify it and learn a little bit more about how it looks. So we'll, we'll have a bit of an example of how we can actually go through this process. Uh, but that is how infrared spectroscopy works. It, it works on the, the idea that different bonds absorb different wavelengths of infrared light. And by measuring those wavelengths, uh, we can identify the different bonds that, and, and thus the different atoms that are present in an unknown compound.